microphone accordingly to Chris. Hi, my name is Janelle. You should all know me because of the kitty ears. So, Can't this hear. year I helped to. We can hear. You got to talk in well, the microphone. Man, I don't want to be that close. It feels uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, okay, so I helped to. Um, words. You'll have to excuse me because I have had a rough day. <laughs> um, I've helped to organize the Paige Elliott puzzle, puzzle Exchange this year, and um, everybody who participated in the Puzzle Exchange, please stand up. Yeah, you know, you have to do it. <laughs> So, this group is really amazing. They really pushed um, where puzzles can go, and what's going to be really fun is that you all are going to have the chance to play with all of these puzzles this year. This is a new thing. So, um, when we open up the executive room for puzzling, just remember that you need to go back there and play with them. But um, let me introduce you to our speaker that is going to tell us about the history of the Paige e. Elliott Puzzle Exchange. This is Melinda. Everybody should know her. She's already stood up for the same Okay, I think I'm taller than she uh, No. <laughs> no? Oh dear, well, anyway. Good try, Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am standing up, okay. Um, and can everyone hear me? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I guess I do need that. Right, left. You know, I'm just like laser, laser pointer. Okay. Right is forward. <laughs> okay, thanks, Chris. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a very... Oh dear, this is stationary. Can I take it out of here? Sure. Okay. Oh. There's another one too, but you might as well use the one that you got. I'm going to use the one that works. I've had, I've, does it not? Here we go. Okay. Sorry to break it, everybody. Um, um, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to give you a brief history of the Page Elliott Puzzle Exchange. It began with the founders. I'm going to talk about the exchange, but I really need to talk about the parley. And there are three people that really made this parley. Rachel Page, Pagey, Pagey, Elliot, Barb Armstrong, and Ann Williams. Each of these people, they were brought together with a love and a passion for wooden jigsaw puzzles. That's what united them. But also, each of the three individuals had various talents and various gifts that, when they came together, it really formed a gestalt and they supported one another and created this event that has lasted for more than 25 years. I'm going to give a very brief look at Beji's life, and it's going to be very brief. I could give a very long talk, probably hours on the woman, but <clears throat> you're, going to get, you're going to get bullets, and you're going to get bullets for a reason, which I'll go to later. She was born in 1913 in Lexington, Mass. She was the youngest of five, of five children. She was gifted in art and music. She played the piano. She did sculptor work. Uh, I'd seen some of them. They were really lovely. She married her dentist, Mark Elliott, and she had three children, Liz, Ruth, and David. Liz and Ruth are here. In 1946, she, bought, she, she and her husband brought, bought, bought River Road, River Bend Farm. She raised Panamera ponies and golden retrievers. She established the Feather Quest, content, uh, Feather Quest Kennel. And she was instrumental in introducing the golden retriever breed, a breed and in uh, the world of dogs, uh, judging, uh, showing, um, all of those things. If you were in that world of dogs, you knew Paige Elliott. 
1973, she published a landmark book called Dog Steps, and it was on can uh, canine anatomy, it was on canine movement. It was followed by a newer version in 1983, and it's incorporated uh, senior radiography at the Harvard Museum. Um, it was uh, really groundbreaking at the time. And she was a world authority. She, she traveled everywhere and lectured until she retired. <clears throat> um, that was a brief history. From that, you can probably tell, hey, she was talented. She did a number of things. She was intelligent. But it's pretty dry. This is some of her life and uh, puzzling. I didn't really talk about that in the last slide. Did puzzling as a child, as so many of us have done in New England. Uh, on pond retirement, uh, which at least some of us do when we finally have some more time, is we'll get some puzzles and we'll start puzzling. And she did it in a big way. She started buying these puzzles from England. And her husband keeps seeing these puzzles come in, and then she's finished them, and then another one comes in, and says, hey, why don't you learn to cut them yourself? it would be a little cheaper. So in 1988, she bought a Hagen, and she started cutting, and she cut over 1,500 puzzles in those 20 years, and they were, they were beautiful puzzles. Um, I'm not going to spend time talking about those, other to say that her cutting style, which is one of my things, her cutting style was very flowing and very pretty, just like her handwriting. And because of her knowledge of anatomy and movement of animals, she was able to do very fine nuances in her figurals so that when you saw them, like if you saw the horse jumping or something like that, it looked right. It, it, it was much better than what most of us can do. <clears throat> but one of Paige's unique gifts, again, this is, I've given you pretty much dry facts. One of her unique gifts was her hospitality. There was always a gathering in her house of diverse individuals. You saw all the things that she did, the breadth of the woman, the different uh, interests. There was always a warm welcome. There was always words of encouragement. Hi, how are you? What are you doing these days? And whenever she talked, she was one of these people that when she looked at you, she was looking at you. You, know, you felt noticed. It was, uh, some people have that gift. When you left, you felt you took away something of value from that visit. So, Puzzle Central at Riverbend Farm. There's the, there's the farm in August, um, or in, I should say in autumn. It is really a, a very pretty place. For the person who just likes to do puzzles, there was always a card table in the corner, and there were puzzles open to assemble on it. If you were a maker or a collector, and lots of times she had gatherings of those people, you talked about cutting tips, you talked about supplies, you talked about any new people, your latest projects, all of the things, all of the things that you were doing today in amongst yourselves with your different, with the different people that you are, are interested in. Um, oh, this one, I don't know if people can see this as well. But in any event, on the far side is a younger version of David Bethany who will be doing the Yankee Swap our own Ann Williams. Um, Bob is on the far left. Uh, in the center is Paigey and then Bob, um, David, Mark Capitello, uh, somebody with dark hair, and uh, uh, Jay Hollis. The milk room. The milk room was a renovated workroom was down the hall, and they used it for various projects on the farm, as well as cutting her puzzles. That's where her hague du saw was mounted onto a table, and the shelves against it were where she had all the other puzzles that she was going to get to. So when you went to the milk room, not only did you see the puzzle she was working at, you saw maybe some that she partially cut the outline on, or whatever else, the things that were coming. <clears throat> It was also the place where you were unwittingly lured to try to get your hand at cutting. So, no matter what your interests were, no matter if you weren't in puzzles, she would manage to get you down there to try her saw. And I've said that over the years, there were hundreds of people, it might have been as many as a thousand, because we're talking quite a few years, 
And she would get everybody down there. I mean, you've got this old lady who was saying, hey, this is fun, come on, you'll really like it. And you go down and try it. Of the people that went down, there are at least 50 people, I'm sure there are more, but there are at least 50 people who took up cutting, who bought a saw, who, who learned to cut. And they may not have gone into it as a business, they may have simply cut, you know, grandchildren, family, friends, whatever, but she really promoted, to the people that visited her, she really promoted it, and um, a lot of people got bitten with the puzzle bug because of her. We fast forward to 1999. Melinda visits Paige for the second time. Melinda is unwittingly lured to the Meldrum. Sounds like a good thing to try. I break a blade. Okay, well, no, no big deal. Oh, she changes it. And she's got a Hagner. For those of you who don't know Hagners, um, it's a little complicated to change the blade. Okay, she sets it up. And oh, I break it again. Okay. <laughs> And I'm thinking, okay, she's going to need I'm just, she puts another one, I'm just going to break it. i got to get out. How do I do this? So I, you know, if I, oh, this is lovely. I, I, I've had enough. But she's saying, oh, no, 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 there's more, there's more. Let me put more in. She was like that. She was very encouraging. I wanted to talk a little of the learning climate in 1999. You could maybe find a book or two, and as I was writing this, it suddenly dawned on me that when we found books like that, we had to go through these libraries with uh, card catalogs, you know? <laughs> um, maybe you found an article in a woodworking magazine. You might find a puzzle at a, at a flea market or an antique shop, ephemera show. You probably won't today, but, and you might, friend of a friend of a friend that you know that you might have stumbled through it. My pathway was this little bur burgeoning app called eBay that I was looking for cardboard puzzles that we'd left when I moved as a kid. And I thought, ah, and I started seeing wooden jigsaw puzzles and I got connected to Pagey. No Google, no Facebook, no Etsy, no YouTube. Today someone can sit down and within 10 minutes get a very good idea of wooden jigsaw puzzles, but not in 1999. The room before the melt room. This was my favorite room. There were shelves along the wall and they were filled with puzzles. You had some famous pars and some pastimes. Uh, Justin Madden's going to be here tomorrow with uh, the current par puzzles that they make. And there was even this newcomer, Stave, who started in 1970. Um, the famous gold boxer victory that, you know, said, uh, gotta buy that saw, Paigey. Uh, the most for me, the most intriguing ones were the ex these assorted little boxes. Maybe they were big, but you know, you could just barely, different sizes, different colors, what's inside them? She generously shared her, connect her, her knowledge and her collection. Um, I would point to something, she'd take it down, we'd open it up, we'd look at it. Um, if I was really interested, she'd maybe let me borrow it. And many of her puzzles, part of the story that she would tell me about them were, I got this, at an, I, I exchanged this with someone at the 1996 parley, or I met, I ex had corresponded with this person and we exchanged puzzles. And, oh, that's great. You mean I don't have to pay, I, I don't have to outbid somebody on eBay to get another puzzle? So it was, for me, it was a wonderful learning experience that I could look at all of these puzzles. <clears throat> we go to 2010, Paige had passed away the previous year. We are having another parley in Salem, Mass, and I was co-chairing with Bob, with Bob Armstrong. Wake up, Bob. <laughs> anyway, but I, I told you, he was the second person of the founders, and this is where Bob has really shined. He has organized, pushed, developed, networked to bring people together for these parleys. He's been organizing every one of them. Sometimes he was simply the other half. Sometimes he's, the latter ones he's been on the steering committee where there are more of us. But he has organized everyone and he has driven them all. Remembering Paige in her collection, I wondered would any of the attendees like the idea because I was doing registration at the time so I had access to everybody. I said, eh, boy, I remember Paige. I wonder if anybody else would want to do it. I sent out an email, and ten people said, yeah, why not? Um, yeah, I loosely 
coordinated this. I coordinated the email and I said, hey, you know, probably Friday night you can get up and show a little bit about your puzzle if you want. You know, you don't have to. Um, and then you can exchange them. That was it. You know. That works sort of. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, uh, I can remember we were sitting in like a lounge area off the male, main ballroom. Some people talked, some people didn't. Maybe they just held up their box, you know. And then, let's see, when they went to exchange, one poor woman did not know all the exchanges because she hadn't met them. This was her first parley and she missed one. She didn't get it until a few months later, but. Um, but one thing, one special thing happened. Joe Seymour was one of the first exchangers. He held up a double-sided puzzle, and what he explained to the group, he explained about Paige's generosity, her sharing of knowledge with him, and he, was, he wanted to give forward. So he made his puzzle so he could share with the new cutters that were also exchanging these various ideas that they would have an example to learn from. The exchange has always been open to new and veteran cutters. So moving on to the next parley, we all know Anne. If she's got she's books, articles, she knows everything about puzzles. If you ask her a question and she doesn't know the answer, chances are no one does. If you, if you ask her a question and she does know the answer, you'll be amazed at the wealth of knowledge that you get from just that one answer. But what you don't know is she has the ability to just look around and she'll, she'll spot something just lying out there. She'll take it and she'll polish it until it shines. And that's what she did with the exchange. In 2012, well, she said, let's give it a name. Paige Elliott, the, the, the focus of the parlor, the, the focus of the exchange was for um, sharing, exchanging, etc. Let's call it after, we give it a name. She came up with guidelines. It has to be a good quality puzzle. You can't just come in and, you know, swap junkers. Um, all the puzzles have to be pretty much the same. No die cuts. You must be made by the maker. You have good packaging. You can't, you can't just give out a baggie. Um, and you should have a write-up with it. This goes with Anne's history uh, interests. We set aside a time at the parlor. It was after we had finished all the main events Friday, and the people could stay and talk, the cutters amongst themselves. They would talk about their puzzles, and then they had informal time. What we found was the rest of the attendees wanted to stay and listen to all of these talks. They didn't go off and do puzzles. They were listening at what we were making. <clears throat> at 2014, we made an extra puzzle, and devoted them to the Strongs and, and, and donated, donated them to the Strong Museum of Play for their permanent connection, so that we have an historic record of what has happened. The session, we opened it to all, we formalized it, not just to two exchangers. It was one of the most enjoyed sessions of that parley. And continued to organize the 200, uh, 2016 and 2018 exchanges. Uh, we get to 2020-21, or 20, and Carol Ottenberg was going to organize that, but of course we have to cancel it. Along comes 2021 with the virtual parley. Deb Dana, who you, you, you've heard, but she isn't at this one, unfortunately. We miss her. Um, organized that one. She got everybody to get their puzzles to her on time. That in itself was an achievement. She then assembled one of each of these puzzles. She took pictures of them. She organized a slideshow, and either she or the person um, gave a talk on them. And this was one of this is one of the most uh, popular YouTube editions we have. So um, you can you can enjoy it again. Twenty twenty two, Deb brought Janelle. Who, in, who was, she was only a 2021 participant. That's the only, that's her first connection with the puzzle parley. Um, and uh, she, she worked with her, she worked with her for much of the year. But Janelle took the ball and she ran with it. But like she's done, she's done it with our site. She's done it with online registration. And I'm sure there's a ton of things I have no idea about that she did. Thank you.
Yeah. Janelle also uh, introduced, she's known <clears throat> Studio Nights and Hands On, and she's going to talk a little more about that. So, from 2010 to 2022, my memory of exchange puzzles, Joe Seymour's comment about thanking Paige and continuing to give forward, Ann Williams polishing, Everything is formally, firmly establishing the process, formalizing the event, Deb Dana doing remote, and Janelle adding the final touches. You now get to enjoy the 2022 Pagey Elliott Puzzle Exchange. Thank you, and let's hear about the puzzles. <laughs> 